Hey guys, it's Pose and welcome to another episode of my Stoke City career mode in FIFA 20 episode 5 now. So I'm get through this a little bit quicker now, but I'm going to show you what we got through in this episode. We've got Millwall, West Brom, Swansea, we've got an FA Cup replay as well against Liverpool in the FA Cup. Derby, Charlton, Preston, QPR and Cardiff and the live come games at the end of the episode. Blackburn and Luton Town both away. Let's have a look at the current league table as well as it stands. We're currently sitting in a very, very comfortable third place. They're only eight points behind Fulham in second, who are three points behind Leeds at the top of the table. Those two are storming away at the moment, only lost one and two games respectively between them. Cardiff, not in the forest, and West Brom round up the top six with, with me as well. Looking at the bottom of the table, Millwall and Derby are struggling at the bottom, but it is Hull, Luton and Barnsley all low on points and all in those bottom three testing for League One football next season. Let's move on though into the episode and we've also got some transfer activity, some youth players that have come up, Victor Alonso, one of the goalkeepers that have come up, very good prospect goalkeeper. I've accepted a deal from Derby for loaning him out for a season and because of the need some game time as well as Benekathobi, he's gone up from Feyenoord, 3.05 million. Um, I've brought him back off loan just so I can sell him on and because I get the money from him because he isn't playing football at all really for me. And Jamie Brown, another youth player. I'm just going to block off this for him. He's a very good um, youth player, and I want him to grow up in the ranks at, the, at Stoke City. Moving on, though, into the gameplay, we start off this eight of today's episode, a very up down episode with a trip, well, with the visit of Millwall. And obviously, Ultimate Difficulty had a little bit of a weird like patch where it made it a lot harder, and I struggled for a, a quite a long time in this in this whole episode recording this. We're starting off Bradshaw getting one of his first goals in the game, and a bit of a hint what's to come. Bradshaw putting Millwall 1-0 up in the first half, and in the second half came a lot more counter-attacks and uh, pressure on the ball. Bradshaw's coming driving forward, I'm not pressuring him, just let him walk through. And he mashes it home to double Millwall's lead. And this is how tough ultimate difficulty is going to be these, this, these days now with all these with this little difficulty patch. I don't know if it's just me or it's PlayStation, because I think it's just PlayStation. But this is what's happening at the moment. There's Bradshaw there that completes his hat trick on 73 minutes. And it gives Millwall pretty much all three points, but the game isn't even over yet. We've still got more goals to come in this. I got ourselves a con consolation goal. Jordan Cousins driving forward in this one Marriott. He's ready to play him through, in which he gets the ball and slots into the bottom corner very tidily. But Jordan Cousins' his very first goal for the club as well in 83 minutes. Nothing really in this game, mo nothing more than the consolation, but found the pass through and he slots it into the corner. It's a very tidy finish. From a player doesn't get much game time. And into the fin into the 86th minute, Bradshaw again. A bit unfortunate, not clearing the ball away properly, and that's what happens when you don't do that. Thompson ends up with the ball and makes gives Liverpool that gives Millwall their free goal cushion back, as that's how the final score ends up. Benekafobi is actually gone as well. He's moved to Feyenoord. We're in the transfer window at this point, so obviously he's actually moved on to Feyenoord, and we don't need his services anymore. Thank you, Benek. Goodbye. Next up, though, is the FA Cup replay against Liverpool. I was thinking of live coming this, but I was live coming at the end of the episode. But yeah, this game didn't go to plan as I would have thought. But the first goal came very, very sloppily. Ball bounced around the box, and unfortunately, Butland couldn't keep it out halfway through the first half. As Mo Salah puts Liverpool one nil up in this game, and we couldn't hold them off in this game, just like we did again at Anfield in that one all draw. We couldn't hold them off, and that slice of fortune there put them one nil up. But moving on a bit later on in the half as well, Fabinho driving forward plays the ball into Mane, who turns his side, plays across, and James Milner getting on the score sheet for Liverpool. And that's not the first time we do as well. Milner coming through again, ball falls to Mo Salah, a pass across the box, and there's Milner yet again to grab his second of the game, and Liverpool's third. And that's not all the other corner into the box not dealt with properly. And the ball ends up being bounced around and Milner for his hat trick smashes the ball in and he tells the Stoke fans what's up and why he's top of the list in terms of Liverpool's rankings. 3 0. Next up though guys is a trip to the Hawthorns to play against West Bromwich Albion in a promotion or a playoff battle at this stage of the season where we're both looking to finish in the top six but at the moment it looks like West Brom are going to be destined for top six and the form we're on at the moment we're not getting anywhere close after only four minutes on the clock I think it's Mateus Pereira I think his name is who put West Brom in front 
and after four minutes of defense are falling apart on this difficulty because it's changing I'm not going to be changing difficulty though I'm up for the challenge as Scott Hogan's up for the challenge in that one as well he bustles the defender off the ball and at stoppage time in the first half puts us back on level terms he's been a little goal drought as well Scott Hogan has so that goal ends it for him and keeps his tally up he's chasing the likes of Bamford and Kai Valero Fulham uh, to, for that golden boot in the championship this season but the defence didn't last very long as Ayaji, I think his name was, trying to claim a penalty after he scored. It puts heads the ball in from a corner and puts him back in front. A very good header and just a very good corner in general. And we couldn't stop it, really. It was just a lovely whip ball in. He just rose high, higher than Shawcross did. And Thunder, that header was a thunderbolt into the corner of the net. And that's how it ended. 2-1 defeat. Two defeats on the bounce is not what we need. Well, three defeats after the Huddersfield game and we're looking down looking further down the table next up though was our fellow the relegation team in Swansea from when we did get relegated two seasons ago from the Premier League obviously we started off a bit bright with a little of a penalty on you know, 12 minutes Wilmot pushing Scott Hogan or Sam Vokes the floor thing it was Scott Hogan pushed him down and we do win a penalty which Sam Vokes is starting to take it who steps up against Mulder in goal we have to do is put in that corner, but all the saves, and that's the downward form that I run at the moment. But we did have a throw in on the 35th minute where the ball was played well to Joe Allen there. He gives the ball to Bowder and GI, who muscles off Van der Horn and smashes it in past the keeper to put us in front, which is just what we needed the confidence boots in the side to go ahead and put us in the lead. Because Swansea are a good side in this game and they're pushing us right to the limits, which you'll see. But the strike across the across his body, across the keeper, and into that into that corner with such power, wasn't happening. We're moving into the 77th minute. We do manage to lose our focus as a ball through and sloppy defending caused Andre Ayew to equalise for the Welsh side, and literally we couldn't defend. This is what's happening with us. I mean, all we needed to do was just get to him and block the shot and we couldn't do that and that mistake costs us two points and we only pick up one and a one all draw another transfer move the, you know, the youth players Jordan Brown has gone out on loan to I think in the Italian side which is what we need to get our youth academy players built up but we do sign another player Tyler Adams if you know the face has come into the squad a lovely um, right back centre defensive mid player as well as the signings of James Chester and Jordan Thompson two of Stokies in real life now uh, on pre-contracts, only could sign them on pre-contracts um, so that's what I've gone ahead and done, I signed them and we're going to get him at the start of next season next up was Derby County though and we tried to take him on and this is what we come up against Derby County at home with a thunderbolt strike, Butland probably could just about get his hand on that, I wish he would have done but it was a good strike and that made us go 1-0 down and our fall continues on and I don't know how I didn't win the ball there but that small mistake not getting the ball from that challenge means we go 2-0 down against Derby and I don't know how we didn't even win the ball there as the player goes off and runs to celebrate all we had to do was get a foot in which we didn't do and it was a simple pass across the box which Butland almost kept out but he couldn't keep it out it was tapped to him and we lose another game and 2-0 defeat to Derby who were down at the bottom of the table it was a big victory for them but we're going down and playoffs looks like is the only thing that's on the card so only a char target for us this season Charlton Athletic though were next up at the Betch 365 another team destined for relegation it seems like at this point but with the quality football like that from Williams yeah, I don't know how they're down there at the table 14 minutes gone they only go 1-0 up but we had to come and fight back in this game to at least get something out because I didn't want to be going down and down a bit more than what we already are we're going down quite a bit and all we need to do is push on to get some more goals and that's what we try to do here, a lovely triangle play and Jack Marriott is the first Stoke player on the score sheet in this game he's getting rising form and he's showing the Charlton fans what's up with that celebration, a lovely shot again across the keeper and into that bottom corner, it's a lovely power bolt but it didn't take long for us to get another goal after this, fast forward this, um, this for you so you guys can don't have to, I'll have to cut the splice the clip a bit more but we do win the ball back and we have a lovely counter attack in play Joe Allen now on the ball plays it through to Marriott and Joe Allen's there in the middle to hit the ball in the back of the net 
and two quick goals is exactly what we needed in this game to at least give us some hope of staying into the playoffs and two quick goals and Joe Allen, the captain, is he's gonna enjoy that goal as much as he can. But it doesn't it is a bit short lived since uh, we left our defence wide open and, and Ake can whack the ball in past uh, Butland in goal and it goes back to being two two. We just couldn't defend. We just can't defend with this, the difficulty change. It's like staying on ultimate, but it, it just changed to be a bit harder. Or oh, could be just I haven't played FIFA in that long. As Baudu and Chai there, Baudu is just a class player, and hopefully he's going to be with us all the way if we do end up making it to the, to the Premiership next year. As he puts his free two up, and that is how the game stays. We've managed to defend just a little bit to get us back on a winning streak, and hopefully we can get a winning streak going as we take on Preston under the full lights at the back 365. As Tyrese Campbell on the second team is coming out to play the ball across Jordan Cousins for the second time in the episode, gets two goals for the season now with that goal on 31 minutes to follow us in the lead against Preston. Struggled to get anything in again in the game in real life against Preston. But in this one, we managed to get into the lead. But some more poor defending mistakes. Never pass out from the back. This is what happened. Johnson now is just dribbling through. Passed the ball back to him. Fell back to him. Tackle. Still got the ball. Whacked in past the youth goalkeeper, Marcos. And they pulled it back on 49 minutes to make it one all. All we had to do was get the ball clear, which we just couldn't do. I've got a habit of passing the ball away from the defence. Just don't do that. Clear the ball away. Better safe than sorry. But luckily though, <laughs> Tyrus came a bit of luck, a player fell over, he won the ball. Nick Powell, how's your, how's your composure son? That's how he says, 2-1 up now in 85th minute. All we had to do was keep, <laughs> all we had to do was keep his composure and whack it in with power into the corner. Don't miss the target. He didn't do any of that, he put it straight in. Power and precision into the corner. And that's what gets us, gets us two wins and a bounce now as we beat Preston 2-1. Next up, we're down to Loftus Road in London to play against QPR. And we started off very, very brightly in this game, very, very brightly in this half, as Jack Marriott gets on the score sheet after five minutes to put us 1 0 up. This was the start we needed and just a redemption we needed to try and get back to winning ways and keep us in the playoff position. 24th minute now, Peter Tabor on the ball to whack it into the corner from a lovely pass and move play. Tabor now getting some, get some decisive goals in this season, and he deserved that one. We go 2 0 up halfway through the first half. Travelling Stoke fans are loving it. That's all we needed to get us a bit more comfortable in this game than we could be a little more comfortable for the rest of the match and hopefully for the end of the season if we just keep on a winning streak and hopefully push for the promotions. But we're not looking that far. Playoffs at least as a minimum as Scott Hogan there. Finesse the ball against the post and Bauer and Di finishes it up. After only half an hour with three goals up and it looks like three points is already in the bag at this stage. We've only <laughs> we've still got an hour to play at this point. What was a good thing? It was unlucky from Scott Hogan not to finesse that into the corner. He needs some more goals to his name. He's going to catch the top goal scorers. Luckily, Baudu's there, and Baudu can give it, gives us a 3 0 lead. But all the action in this game came from the first half, nothing in the second. All this one is is a consolation goal for QPR, and they had nothing from this. It's a good corner again, Hugel on the end of it, though, heading it backwards. And Butland should be doing better there on the angle. He could have just lifted his hands a bit higher to get something on it but that's how the game ended nothing much in this game just three points in the bag yet again three wins on the bounce it's just what we needed and it's a 3-1 it is to Stoke and the final game we're going to be uh, post this is the trip to or the, the trip or the visit of Cardiff another Welsh side and we just need to play a through ball here to Bowden and GI. all the action in this game came in the second half as Bowden and GI sweats it to Jack Marriott and when the sweat's on you've got to use it and apply it well and Jack Marriott was there at the right time to hit it into an empty net After, at the start of the second half to give us a 1-0 lead all we needed was to get a lead in this game because Cardiff pressed well in the first half and when you're playing fellow playoff um, contenders you need to get an early lead or at least a, a lead as our newly signing Tyler Adams puts, his, puts the ball into the back of the net for the first time in Stoke City colours after only 77 minutes and it gives us that comfortable 2-0 lead and we look like we're staying ahead of Cardiff in the table while on track for three points as long as we can defend them off for the final 14 minutes that's all we needed to do which we did we managed to grab another three points 
We're back to the live comp part of the episode now. Enjoy. Right then, guys, back into the live comp part of the episode now. We're in obviously the final two games of the episode. We've got Blackburn and Luton to play. But before we play those games, we've got to have a look at the table and see where we are. We haven't had a really good form, really. Um, the ultimate difficulty feels a lot different from when I last played. It has been a while since I played, like I said. And um, it's been obviously a bit weird, but ultimate difficulty has been messing me about. It's probably why I lost six months to Huddersfield that time in the last episode. Uh, but obviously in this one I'm currently sitting in 5th, we've got a game in hand over teams like Nottingham Forest and West Brom so obviously a win could obviously take us probably up to 4th at least if you can beat Blackburn in this next game but Fulham and Leeds are now starting to tie themselves up, obviously Leeds got a game in hand but obviously it looks like Leeds are going to jump back up to the top of the table if they do get at least a point which I don't know who they're playing against Middlesbrough away so there's still got a possibility to do it West Brom, Nottingham Forest and Cardiff in the top 6 with me Swansea just outside, literally 2 points behind the Welsh rivals Cardiff down the bottom end of the table, let's go have a look we find Luton, Hull and Barnsley all in the relegation zone derby and Charlton starting to pull away a little bit now Luton we've got to play in this episode as well so hopefully a win against them and uh, we can we can obviously make the head of my eyes a bit worse. Blackburn is next up though. They're currently sitting in 17th place. Only they've lost 18 games and only drew 5 and won 11. So let's see if we can get a win against Blackburn. So then this is the side I'm going to be using for this game against Blackburn. I'm going to switch up now to a 4-4-2. The only formation I've been real comfortable using recently is a 4-4-2 formation. So that's what I'm going to be running. Might be making it a bit, bit easier for me. I'll make it a bit harder because I've, I've got one less uh, defender. But we're going with Butland in goal. We've got Molassi at left back. Turunariga and Davies in centre backs with Tyler Adams newly acquired at right back. Tom Ince on the right wing, James McLean on the left wing, left midfield. You got Joe Allen and Bowdoin and Di in the in the centre mids. Jack Barry up top with Scott Hogan. Let's hopefully this team um, can get me some three points. Some of them are a bit tired as I played the last game, but I want to. I'd rather play the stronger team for Blackburn rather than the my second side against Blackburn because obviously Luton are a worse opponent so um, all I can do now is get into the game let's see if we can get three points so here we are then guys we're in Blackburn here at Ewood Park to take on Blackburn Rovers and it's a big game we need to get some um, back on track really get some points and start putting some pressure on Leeds and Fulham at the top of the table but let's have a look at the Blackburn side for this game Let's have a look then. Um, Walton Bennett, Cunningham, Smallwood, Evans, uh, Brigitten, Armstrong, Downing, and Dak in the team. Um, this is what happened with my fever. I don't think it's mine or, or just mine, but PS4, it seems to be doing this whenever you get the squad up. But 4 2 3 1, I've just shown you the, the list of players. Let's just get into it. We need our side, we're in our starting 11. Let's see if we can get a solid three points here. Come on, boys. Pass Jack Marriott. Can I get some support now? I see the run from Adams at the top of the pitch. Ball's gone to Bowdo. Joe Allen. No, it's Marriott. Sorry, and Marriott's shot just deflected wide, and it's early pressure, but we do get a corner. And whip this ball in. Bowdo's there at the front post. Get a shot off. We can. It's 1 0. I think it's Jack Marriott. Yes, it is. Jack Marriott at 8 minutes has given us the lead here at Ewood Park. A fortunate corner in. There's bouncing around the box. But Jack Marriott gets on the score sheet by lingering at the back post to put it in. Ball coming in here, lovely whipped in ball I think from Joe Allen, header from Baudu, or the defender, let, let the good ball go to Marriott's path and all he can do is volley that one into the back of the net, scuffed it a little bit but they all count at the end of the day and we're 1-0 up, Jack Marriott after 9 minutes gets his 14th goal of the season, what a signer he's been, let's hope we can keep up this pressure now and get another goal hopefully to make ourselves a bit more comfortable in the game and Allen won the ball Bows, Baudu I see his run from Hogan and he slipped in for two Scott Hogan finally ends his goal drought he's been on a good run at the start of the season and recently he's been lacklustering for goals but Scott Hogan's finally back on the score sheet and you see what it means to the team all the team going up together to celebrate with him Baudu trying to fake shot, trying to find the gap. Hogan making a lovely run to slip inside, and Hogan manages to pull it through. And there's a lovely tapped in goal from the bottom corner from our number 20 on loan. I'm going to have to probably bring him in next season in case we go up in the Premier League or if we have to fight another season in the Championship. Scott Hogan gets his 16th goal. Now he's pulling away from Jack Marriott. 
Now it was closing in, but Hogan now has pulled, pulled away again. 2 0 up, and we're a li lot more comfortable now. This formation change to the 4 4 2 has really helped me out. But we managed to get the ball out, and we can get one last attack off probably this half. Breaton. Turn Riga defending well. Slip the ball through. And it's a goal for Blackburn on the end of end of the first half. Bradley Dack, Blackburn's main man, you could say, getting on the score sheet for him and reducing the deficit to only one goal now. Lovely play though. Lovely pass through and another pass through. First time shot on the volley against Butland. He's not saving that. It's a brilliant finish from Bradley Dack. And what we can do about it, but it is 2 1 now just before half time. Here we go then, second half kicks off. And let's see if we can. Really, we need an extra, another goal now to, just to give us that little light between the, myself and Blackburn. Oh. Gintz is now getting back. Tyler Adams is not staying back at all. Ball's in. Good save, Butland. Kept us from going behind there another shot comes in and it's over the bar I need to pull a sub out Tyler Adams and I'm going to have to keep him on for now but I'm going to have to bring my own subs on because the team's getting really tired and Blackburn are having all the chances here is that substitution then a double substitution for last year and Ince coming off for Atebo and uh, Tom Edwards Tom Edwards going at left back and Peter Atebo and playing him at right mid because he's got the pace hopefully he can break away and Gallagher comes on for Stuart Downing for Blackburn I just need to play safe now, really. Davis. I need to find a player in space here. Oh, it's a poor pass there. The direction of the pass. He's going to play through. Can I get a tackle in? Can someone get a tackle in? Save from Butland. The players slacked off there, no one was in space really, they couldn't actually pass anyone. Davies got a little foot in. Tonariga tried to close the angle but Butland's save is what saved us from going, from losing our lead. High ball to the back post. Poor clearance away by Tom Edwards. I might have to switch back to me old five, double five at the back just to defend this last 15 minutes as I'm going to lose, lose the lead here it looks like. McLean balls in, back post, and it has gone in, and Blackburn have put themselves in level terms on 12 minutes from the 90th. I said that was, it was, I knew it was coming. They had the pressure. The ball goes all the way through the back post. Tyler Adams, I don't know what you're doing there, mate. You just let him jump. Bradley Dack yet again in acres and he just heads it with a scuffed header and it ends up in the top corner and it's 2-2 and we need a way back into this now and get something from it we need a table to get running really he's the best player we've got on the pitch at the moment to get something from this game Bowdy's in space Bowdy have a shot good save from the keeper and let that go for a corner if I can can't Shoot, please, shoot. One of you shoot. Get oh Joe Hatland's offside. Force change here, we're gonna have to bring Vokes on. For Hogan. Tabor's got pace, he's got stamina. Oh, it's a ball pass that I wanted to go to Joe Allen. He's in space. Why would I pass to McLean in that position? It looks like it's gonna be all over as well. We're not gonna be able to grab a, a third. Let's just hope Blackburn don't grab a third. And that's it. Surely we're back. It is. That is full time in this game. We had a good chance really at getting all three points, but Blackburn came out a little stronger in the second half and they grabbed themselves that equaliser like 14, 30 minutes from the from the 90th and Bradley Dack is the man that saved them and saved Blackburn a point and we it's more like two points lost rather than one point gained for us final score though is Blackburn 2 Stoke City 2 Dax scores equaliser against Stoke City that man was just on good form for them 
in this in that last game against Blackburn a draw let's have a look at the table how it stands after, after we gain that extra point um, still in fifth position um, six points ahead of Cardiff that are in sixth but only one and two points behind West Brom and Nottingham Forest respectively Leeds obviously I think Leeds won again and they go back on top of the top of the league three points ahead of uh, Fulham so obviously they are now on 94 points and Fulham on 91 we really need to be just looking for playoffs looks like the top two are going to be way out of the question now we're not picking up as many wins as we'd like so really top six is where we're going to have to go and look at um, really so whilst it's just not going to not, not, it's not going to happen top two is out of the question so the top six is where we need to be next up though is Luton let's have a look where they are down at the bottom of the league so that's where they are looks like they're starting to pick up a bit of form six wins five draws 24 losses though uh, and only 23 points in 22nd place so uh, we're going to take them on now we're going to Kenilworth Road to see if we can get some free points against another team struggling for survival and this is quite a big issue because I haven't actually seen this yet. Nick Powell's transfer request. Nick Powell has come to us and told us that you've made no attempt to resolve any issues regarding his desire to leave the club. Well, I don't think I've made it. I don't, I've not heard he was. He submitted a transfer request. He's just unhappy though. He's not like in the red of his morale. He's unhappy with his playtime, his team performance. So I'm gonna have to play him a little bit more if he wants to. If he wants to stay, because he could be a good player to use next season. Um, Obviously, I'll, I'll play him in this next game anyway, so I'm going to play the second team. So I'll play him in this next, next game, hopefully his, his happiness goes up, really. One thing I'm going to be doing as well, this man, Thibaut Verlinden. We're running out of wingers, really, and I'd, I want to use Thibaut a bit more, get his stats up a bit more. So I'm going to recall Verlinden from his loan at Orlando City, 16 and a half thousand. And welcome back to Stoke. He's got up two overall since he's been out there, which is good. He's a bit unhappy with his, um, with his team performance. As he would be seeing, obviously when playoffs he's hoping for a bit higher. But let's get Tebow some more playtime and get his shirt number back as well. Let's change his shirt number back to 23. Uh, Chiron Riga has nicked it, but yeah, let's put him back to 23. Much better. Welcome back, Tebow. So then, guys, this is the team we're going with for the second game um, of the episode, the final game of the episode actually that we're playing. Let's loot in at Kenilworth Road. Go for that. So going for the second team. Um, Marcus in goal, little youth academy keeper that's coming up the ranks. I'm gonna play him over Adam Davis just because he'll overtake him in rating pretty soon. Uh, Tom Edwards, Ryan Shaw, Cross Martin Zendi, and Stephen Ward at the back. Etebo, Clucas, Ince. I know we played Ince played the last game, but I need to use him for this one. I might bring um, Tebow Linden on as well for him um, when he gets a bit more tired. Powell at the top, even though he transfer, it wants a transfer request. I want him happy playing a game so he stays at the club with Lee Gregory and Tyrus Campbell up top so let's go with this team it's a good team against um, Luton tried to balance both the first and second team out in terms of ratings so this second team is still a very very strong side and yeah let's go with the second team see if we can get three points against struggling Luton Town so then, guys here we are at Kenilworth Road for this game against Luton Town and it's a wet rainy day in London but without further ado let's have a look at the side Luton have out for the game today here it is then, Simon Sluger, Bree Pearson, Masunda, Potts, Tunnicliff, McManaman, Berry, Mpanzu, Collins and Hilton. It's starting 11, obviously the, the, the team names are not going to come up, but they are playing the same formation as me actually, the 4 one 2 2 narrow. So I'm playing my second team for this, so we need to see if we can get ourselves a big three points here. It's against Fear from bottom and we need a big win from them. Fear from bottom for three points, come on, let's go. Here's Ince on the ball. He's going to be a bit tired from the last game he played, but I don't think he'd mind as he gets played through here. Tom Ince. Can he get all the way through? He can't. Get somewhere, though. Tyrus Campbell can have a shot. Ooh, just wide. Get a foot in at least. Play down the line to Collins. Gets his low ball in. Not cleared properly. <gasps> And just wide in the mark, even I thought that was going in for a second there. I think it's Tony Cliff with the shot, didn't clear it, Runa might have ended in, and across the face of goal, and fortunately he didn't go in. The ball's forward to Tyrese, can I get some support? And we get an attack now, Nick Powell. 
I think he's going to be offside there. Nick Powell, the strike. Good strike, but it's an easy save from Sluger. Dredged it. Ince. Can I get some options? Let's see. Lee Gregory, shot across goal. It's wide. That's probably the best chance of the game we've had. Lee Gregory's got a little bit of space there. Maybe I should go for the near post, but I tried to blast it across goal and it's gone well wide. Goals played over the top, it was saved from the keeper there. Players just standing still, switching off, not going for the ball whatsoever. We need to get going here is Klukas. Can he get some sort of good control in the pool? Here's Powell. I see the run. Tom Ince, please, 1 0. And Tom Ince's shot now goes wide. On his weaker foot, yeah, but he should be burying that. All the time in the world there, shot across the goal and it fizz wide. We're getting the chances, we just can't take them at the moment. And that is half time and nil nil. We could be three to four nil up at this point. Um, Luton have had some good chances as well, <laughs> they have to take the lead. But we've had the more dominant possession, more dominant the ball and having shots on target. We just can't put the ball in the back of the net at the moment. Team, like I say, the team just feels so s slow and sluggish. Get it out. <laughs> just need to attack here. We need to get something from this, surely. Surely he's onside. Mick Powell. He's not. He's off. Got my substitute coming on. Terminance is coming off. Jordan Cousins is coming on. Tom Ince has been poor in this game, so we need to get someone else on. He's been low stamina anyway from the start of the game. Because good, I can get my substitutes on. Campbell and Klukas off. Villinden and my youngster, the youth player Brown, is coming on and he's play on their places. 15 minutes to try and grab something from this. Ball's gone through. It's a good save from the keeper, Marcos. Stopped a certain goal there. Shot. Save again, Marcus. Ten minutes left of this game before stoppage time, and we're getting pressure from Luton here. Header wide. Had the man on the front post anyway. Tom Edwards is going to put out of play, literally into stoppage time now. End of the flat footed, luckily it's offside. Can we get the ball up the, up the pitch in time? I don't know if we can here. It's the last attack of the game and it's belonging to Luton. The ball goes across the, and out. And that is full time and I couldn't get anything against Luton Town who are third from bottom of the league. They defended well, played with a clash of formations, didn't really help. But the second team feels very, very sluggish and very, very different compared to the starting 11, the first team. But at the end of the day, a point's a point, but for the second game, both Larkham episodes, it's been two points lost rather than a point gained. Four points lost in total, nil-nil at Kenilworth Road. It says Luton Town left a room missed chances in, in Stoke City deadlock, but we missed all of our chances in the first half. We could have been like 4-0 up at half time, but we didn't take any of our chances. But let's have a look at where we are now, we're currently in the championship. 36 games played, we've got 10 games left to go in this season before um, playoff football has to be played, and it looks like that's where we're destined to be at the moment, but if we keep going on we're going to get a bit, um, a bit sluggish. Teams like Swansea and Sheffield Wednesday could always catch up. But as long as we finish in that top six position, that's really where I'm going for. Leeds and Fulham are still miles ahead of everybody. They're pretty much almost secured automatic promotion in the next like five games or so. Leeds three points off the 100 point mark. Fulham three points behind them on 94. You got West Brom and Nottingham Forest are only three points between them. I think they, those teams are also slacking as well, dropping points, which is good for me because I need to start catching them up. 
Cardiff in 6th, Swansea and Sheffield Wednesday, like I said, behind in 7th and 8th respectively. Going down the table, let's have a look where everyone else is at. In the bottom of the table especially. Barnsley is still um, 12 points away from safety. Hull and Luton have a little bit of leeway ahead of Barnsley. But they're yet, they're still in the relegation zones. Here Derby and still slowing down. And any team really between, I say, 18th um, to 24th can go down at this point. But we're not really interested down there. We just want to make sure we finish in those top six positions. Because it is likely we have got a, a good run now. Like next games against Hull, etc. And that's what I'm going to be doing in the next episode. I want to finish off this championship season this next episode. Ten games left to go. We've got games against Hull, Reading, Millersborough, Wigan, Barnsley, Leeds, Birmingham, Bristol and Brentford. And finally, but not in the forest, away. And after that, if we finish in the playoffs, that's what the live come will be. Playoff football. All three of the games if we manage to make it to the final as well, the playoffs. That's pretty much it then, guys. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I know we're currently without football at the moment due to the this the dreaded uh, virus that I can't say the name of because I probably get um, something happened to this bloody video if I do. So I'm not going to say it. You guys know what it is. But don't forget, guys, if you guys have enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave us a like and really appreciate all the support you're giving on the series if you're new be sure to subscribe to the channel as well because not only do we do these I also do match day vlogs when football eventually comes back I will be doing match day vlogs but I will try and get another video out with my thoughts and updates on the whole, the whole pandemic situation so I'll give you my thoughts about it but anyway guys thank you guys for watching this episode this is Pones, I'm signing out peace <laughs>